Three o'clock on Wednesday. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, we already know what that means. It means we are here live for your real estate update. I'm Lisa. I'm Gary. And we are here with some exciting real estate news for you today. What are we talking about today, sir? This is the top five reasons to buy a second home in 2021. Can you believe it? It's January. Now's the time. So that's what I've got there. You may want to turn that sound down just so Yeah, 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 I will. Okay, go ahead. Get a little bleed back while you figure that out. Uh -huh. Get us up there. Yep. Yeah, at one point we were turning our phones on airplane mode and that wasn't actually turning them off. So now we go airplane mode and do not disturb. We, we learned. <laughs> Trial and error, <laughs> but here we are. What's your real estate question of the day? We will an uh, answer it here. Yes, we have one right here. Carnac says, Carnac, uh, old, old joke, old Johnny Carson joke. Okay. I'm too young. I didn't get it either. <laughs> they had to tell me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Top five reasons to buy a second home in 2021. What's the number one reason, Lise? Lifestyle. Absolutely. Fun times. So what do you mean by lifestyle? Well, I think when you, when your kids grow up so fast as we are, lear are, lear are learning and we had a second home growing up, that we went to every weekend and some of my happiest memories of my childhood were at our beach house and so one of the things is just making those memories and taking the time um, with your kids while they're little because boy it goes by fast it does yes uh, as a youngster our second home was a tent so <laughs> <laughs> but you still went went away yes we did we went uh, camping every weekend in a 16 by 16 army pyramid tent so yes <laughs> I do. Never forget it. That but was... it's still some of your best memories and memories we've made with Rex too at the lake in Oklahoma um, and talking about it and you're still friends with all those people. Yes, fun times. They grew up with. Yes, making memories every day is a memory. So make sure every day is memorable. Uh-huh. Hey, is that a quote? That's a quote. <laughs> I probably read that somewhere. Okay, so the second reason why you should buy a second home in 2021 is for an investment absolutely investments go up in value so that's what you're hoping I, I mean as far as an investment you've got a lot of money in stocks everything that I've been taught about money growing up was you know certain amount of money in stocks certain amount of money in bonds certain amount of money in real estate correct and a certain amount of money in cash an emergency fund so if your stock portfolio has gotten the best of your portfolio which a lot of us, has, that has happened, uh, perfect time to buy a second home. Yeah, the market went up quite a bit last year and despite the crazy year, and you might want to take some of that profit off the table and put it into real estate. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, second can, home's a great way. Yeah, it can be a sound and tangible way uh, for, for savings too when you have a second home. It's a good investment and it's an investment that you can actually go and be in and enjoy. Absolutely. So it's money that you can enjoy right now in your second home. So that would be reason number two. Yep. Reason number three? Retirement home. So are you thinking about uh, planning for your retirement home and you want to get started and start getting it paid for? Um, it's a great time to buy a second home in your retirement place. Yes, of course. Now, if you buy it as a retirement home, you may not want to retire in the same state you're in now. So you may be looking at a second home in a different state, which makes it much more difficult to get to, let's say use every weekend. Some people can, some people can't. Mm -hmm. uh, some people can take a couple weeks to a month off a year. That would be an excellent place to spend your time. So yeah, as a retirement home, you know, basically you could move into your retirement home when you retire and. Maybe rent out your primary home for income as part of your income portfolio during retirement. Yeah, the retirement planning. Your needs might be different for a retirement home that you might not have considered uh, when you're maybe in your 50s or 60s. You might want to um, be sure that you include your lifestyle tw uh, 20 years down the road, that you want to be close to good health care, possibly a single story, be in a community where there's activities. Uh, so there just might be different needs that you need to consider if you're buying a retirement home when you're still young, 50 or 60 year old. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or when you're in your 20s, you know, you may be in second home, retirement home, 
One thing about a house, if you don't like it, you can always sell it. That's and right. And buy another one. So that's, that's right. I actually said that to a buyer this week. I said, hey, this is not a terminal decision. I said, you know, <laughs> buy this house. If you don't like it, you can always move on and sell it and buy something else. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, we're always amazed when, you know, a property sells and six months later it's back on the market. And we're amazed just on the fact that somebody bought something. They were like, you know what? This isn't working out. So they're going to put it back on the market and buy something different. The uh -huh. amazement comes from they probably didn't check all the boxes or go through everything. Of course, these days, could have bought a, bought a home or a second home. And then six months later, you're working at home. You're no longer going to the office. So <laughs> uh -huh. that could have been a big change, too. A lot of right. things going on in the market, but change is inevitable. So embrace change. Yep. Number four. Vacation rental. Maybe you want to get into vacation rental and you want the income. You want to have a second home that you can go to. You can make it your own. You can leave your toys there. You can leave your clothes there. Uh, so it's easy for you to vacation there. But then you also want the rental income as a vacation rental. Yeah, that would work out. I mean, Airbnb, big business these days. So your home's fully furnished. Your Airbnb it. Uh, so when it's not rented, you go down and use it yourself. So that could be a very big advantage. So it's not only a second home, it's bringing in income, and it's a home that you still get to use. That's right. And we always, if you want to use it on the weekends like that, of course, the closer to you, the better. The more likely you are to use it, if it's within a couple of hours of your primary home, you will definitely use it more often. I would think so, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, 30 to 50 miles is really the, is a good range for a second home. However, if you're, like I said, if you're getting a couple of weeks to a month vacation a year, then it really opens up a lot of doors to distances further off where you can go and stay a month and come back. And, you know, the one thing about it, you have to want to go there every year. We've had some friends that bought a house in the mountains, kept it, you know, a decade, and they sold it because they just got tired of going to the same place. So you've got to consider that too. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. But that's one thing when you have a vacation home, um, you get to know that area really well. So it's the upside too. I mean, that's a double-edged sword. Yes, of course. And then, you know, this is the top five reasons to buy a second home. But if you bought a second home in an area and then you wanted to invest in some investment property in the area, you're going to know it a lot better, the area a lot better, and know where to invest in that area. That's right. Okay, number five. Number five, what's always, always true? Death and taxes. So number five is tax benefits. <laughs> yes, tax benefits. There's always tax benefits that come along with real estate. Now, we're not CPAs. We're not tax attorneys. We're not attorneys at all. So this is going to be just a very broad brushstroke. Yeah, you know, one of the things, if you're going to have a vacation home, if you stay in it uh, less than 14 days, so you can rent it, excuse me, you can rent it, up to 14 days per calendar year, and it's still considered your second home. As soon as you rent it more than 14 days per year, then you can take advantage of the tax benefits of being able to write off more things. Being, If you rent it over 14 days, then it becomes an investment property. That's right. So that's a very broad, you're going to want to check with your CPA, your tax attorney, tax professionals to, to verify all this information. I always find it kind of ironic that, you know, this is part of what we do. However, we really can't discuss this because everybody's situation is different. That's so we right. don't want to give you advice on something that's like, oh, well, hey, what about this and this? Because everybody has this and this. Right. Well, and the tax laws and the rules change all the time. So that's a moving finish line. But as of right now, yeah. those, those were the rules as I read them. <laughs> right. So if we backed up a little bit, the Airbnb, you could Airbnb it uh, 12 days a year. And most people want to Airbnb up more than that. Some people are fine with the 12 days, you know, mm -hmm. just enough to cover some of the expenses of a second home. And you'll find out you have a lot more friends when you have a second home because they'll be wanting you to give it to all their charity auctions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like having a boat. Hey, let's go. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's where all those great trips come from when you go to the charity events <laughs> from your friends with second homes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. It's nice. So your friends with second homes, you go to the charity, you buy their home, the money goes to the charity, you get a write-off, and you get to stay in your friend's home. So it's not free, but you get to stay there. 
<laughs> yep, another tax benefit. Yes, of course. <laughs> Charitable <laughs> contribution. I love it, yes, and it is a big contribution. Charities love it. Yep. It's always one of the, it's usually not a silent auction, that's usually a live auction charity. Yep. Yeah, it is where they, you know, okay, five more dollars, five more dollars. Yeah, five, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, did you want to go over this? Just move into it? Oh, yeah, there's just an, uh, another thing. If you want to take advantage of the tax benefits of a primary home, and like Gary was saying, that if you want to swap, you move into your vacation home for two years and rent your primary home, uh, possibly for income, then you can claim your vacation home as your primary once you've been there two years for the tax benefit of selling it. If you want to take that uh, big deduction, the two fifty or 500000 tax-free increase, um, if that's something that, that um, you don't want to pay your capital gains, you can always move into it for two years and then go from there. Yeah, well, this would be an interesting question for your CPA. So, living in your primary residence for several years, you buy a second home. So, you move from your primary residence, you live in your primary, in your second home for two years. Now, if you sell both of them at the same time, do you get five hundred thousand per uh, per couple, two hundred fifty thousand per single, five hundred thousand for a couple? Would you get a million dollars for you? I don't know. I'm yeah. going to ask. I'm going to email my CPA right now and ask them. That's a good question. Oh, my gosh. A million dollars tax Any free. CPAs out there that are watching that can answer that right now for us? Well, it makes sense to me. But uh, like I said, we're not giving tax advice. We're not giving legal advice. There's probably a disclaimer that says you can't double dip in the same five years. But I'll find out. I'll find out the answer. I'll ask. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Great. Okay. So... Interest rates are at a record low. I see you have that written down. Yeah, I just put that on there as another reason it's a great time to buy a second home because you have very favorable interest rates. They are. They're mm -hmm. historically low. Historically low. Crazy. Yes. And destined to stay that way as far as we know. Of course, anything can change. I know the Fed's meeting like yesterday and today. So they're going to give guidance on all that stuff coming up very soon, possibly this evening or tomorrow, so we'll know more about interest rates then, but right now they're historically low. Yep. And then I've got some final Ventura County numbers I wanted to share with you because the numbers are just crazy. Um, the new listings uh, overall, 2019 to 2020, was down 7.3%, but boy, it feels like it's more than that. Um, and the average sales price from 2019 to 2020 is up 13.6 percent. I mean that is that is a huge number um, on average sales price. And so the average sales price of a home in Ventura County finished 2020 at 898,605 dollars. So basically 900 thousand dollars is the average sales price for Ventura County. So people have figured out what an awesome place it is to live here. Yeah, unless you contrast that to LA County, which is to the south of us, or Santa Barbara County, which is to the north of us, both of those are actually higher than Ventura County. So we're still a bargain. We're the best kid on the block. Yeah, yeah. And then the average days on market um, is down almost 20%, 19.7% average days on market uh, from 76 in 2019 to 61 in 2020. But the recent, some of the other stats I've read is it's down to 21 days, uh, days on market. So it is screaming down word. Things are closing very quickly. So the market is still very busy. Um, it is a seller's market. If you're thinking about selling your second home, uh, you want to do something else, move somewhere else, buy a different one, um, let us know. We love to talk about real estate and it's also a great time to be a seller in this market. Oh yeah, multiple offers on your property if it's ready to go, even if it's not ready to go, even if it's a fixer. As long as it's priced right and marketed right. So that's where we come in for sure. Yep. So if you have any questions for question of the day, DM us. We love to get your DMs uh, when you reach out to us. Please do. And we love to talk about re uh, real estate. So what is your year? Do you have a year over year statistic right here? On, on which? What is, like if I bought a home a year ago in Ventura County and I'm selling it today. What, this one? Not the sales price. Oh, the sales price is up 13.6. Uh -huh. I guess I was talking about the median price. Okay. 13.6%. I thought we were in the 20s. Yeah, it just depends what chart you 
look at. I think everybody calculates statistics their own way. <laughs> they do, kind of like we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just report the news. Yes. The news I find, I report. I don't make it up. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, question of the day. And yes, here it is. This is going to be interesting answer. Let's see. It. That's our question down. of the day. Where would you buy a second home today? You're asking me? Yes, that's what, that's what the question of the day is. Well, in Ventura <laughs> County, of course. Yes, I know. I Was know. there a different answer? Oh, no. I just think, you know, there's so many people, let's say Tennessee, Florida, Texas, Nevada, all the no-tax states, you know, are, are getting a lot of play. So that's where would you buy a second home today? Ventura County, of course. Of course. <laughs> so we love to talk about real estate. If you want to talk about real estate, you can always find us, reach out to us. Uh, you can visit us at GaryLisa.com. Your real estate edge. We'll talk soon. Thanks for watching. Okay, thanks, guys. It's a wrap.